Hi, um, today I want to talk to you about using the one minute time frame um, and how to study that uh, using technical analysis and technical indicators. Um, so there's a lot to go over um, in terms of how to chart these properly. Um, I'm going to use the MACD to start with um, because a lot of people like to use the MACD um, when doing technical analysis. So um, first of all, what I'd say is that there is um, two parts of the day. There's basically the nighttime or extended hours trading um, and daytime uh, trading. So um, what happens here is that in the daytime, you can see the volume basically goes up. Um, during a certain period, um, usually starting around 9.30 um, and then ending at around 4 o'clock. So that's pretty much the day period um, trading. And um, when you're trading with the indicator, um, it really depends on what indicator you're using um, because certain indicators do not work well on cross time frames. So when you cross from uh, extended hours into regular trading, um, sometimes you can have a mess up. It turns out that the MACD is pretty useful um, looking at both time frames because it only uses price. So you don't really have to worry about that exchange in volume. Um, but indicators that do use volume, you do need to watch out for um, and different time frames. Uh, on many trading platforms, uh, one minute is the fastest time frame that they have. Um, there are other trading platforms you can pay for um, that give you a little bit more visibility um, into the details on what's happening per second even. So how do you get insight into higher time frames um, even on a lower time frame like the one minute chart? Um, and that's basically using technical analysis. So. Um, if you look at my uh, indicators here, I have a fast period of eight minutes or eight um, and a slow period of 16 um, and then a signal period of eight. So basically um, any kind of technical analysis that you do um, ends up being a higher time frame, um, even though you're using um, a one minute time frame, right? So um, to get some of these numbers to come through here, um, it takes you know eight to sixteen minutes um, just to get um, some trends to be showing up on this. Um, so you could be pretty late to the game um, following um, even a trend line on um, MACD, for instance. So one of the uh, pretty obvious truths in trading is that um, essentially the trading goes up and down um, per minute um, typically. So you're looking at um, a lot of up trades, a lot of down trades. Um, so sometimes what you can do um, is you can use a hike and ashy chart um, on a one minute um, and get a little cleaner um, kind of organization of what's going on in the trend. So it is very difficult to see some of these trends. If they turn it back to candle, you can see that there's quite a lot of trends that look like they're both up and down. So Heike Nashi basically takes the midpoint um, of the previous candle and uses that as a guide. So you can see on all these candles, it will take the midpoint 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 of the previous candle as the starting point. Um, and as a result of that, you basically have to break the midpoint um, to be a green, to swap from green to red, you have to break the midpoint um, of the pre candle um, and kind of cross over here. So you'll see um, that many of these trends um, are a little bit easier to follow. So I actually use Heikinashi on a one minute chart time frame quite often um, just because it gets a little bit intense. However, the dilemma is that I like to look at both before I do the final trade, I'll look at um, the actual candle chart because the candle will show the exact tick per second um, on that. So you can see it as it fluctuates, whereas the Heiken Ashi will kind of show you the moving average um, and it's a little bit harder to know precisely what the, what the value is. Now, one thing that's important to realize is that um, when you have a trade on a lower time frame, let's move this back to today. So we can see that things have leveled out quite significantly here. Um, it is hard to make a trade at that point because it's leveled out so much. Now you can use maybe the indicator and say, well, it looks like it just crossed over and it's looking a little negative. But um, technically things don't oscillate too much at night. And so it's likely just to level off um, overnight or maybe drop a little bit. So there's basically um, three types of trends or momentum in the market. There's up momentum and there's down momentum and then there's steady kind of momentum, right? Those are the three main types and those are the three trends. Um, and we wanna look at each of those. So basically here we have a downtrend um, in the market. 
Um, on the indicator, what we see is we see that the indicator is quite negative, below zero uh, for most of the, the field there. Now, we can also use a volume indicator uh, during this time period because there is quite some volume. Now, under this period, it is harder to use a volume indicator, a little easier to use a volume indicator uh, during the daytime. So we have this set up, and we can see that the volume is predominantly negative um, in this region here. You can see from here to here, it's basically negative, and then it turns positive for a little while, and then goes back to being negative and positive and a little bit and leveling off. So in addition to those three categories, you can divide the three categories up into are you looking at the momentum for the price or are you looking at the momentum for the volume? Um, and they are very different. So this would be momentum of the volume. Now, if you want to look at both the price and the volume, you want to use an indicator like the force index, right? And then you can start to see certain divergences and convergences a little bit clearly. So and that gets into the topic of reversals um, and divergences and convergences. So let's just draw exactly what a reversal might be. So right here um, is a potential reversal for the following day, right? So we see that we are making basically um, lower low, low, higher lows here, right? Um, while we are not really making any new highs, we are making at least one new high right there. Um, so that shows that there is a general trend in the upward direction. Um, and it should have broken right in here, but it did not. So you can see that it started to kind of climb up here a little bit. And if we zoomed in, we may be able to see some more details on the force index. And you can see a little bit of what happened here, right? So you can see that maybe this right, this bump right here was one of the big problems in that whole analysis. But in terms of a daily chart, um, that's how the minute chart can work. So it is pretty helpful. Sometimes this can get quite choppy on a choppy day. Now, let's go back um, a day here in the chart um, to see what's going on. Let me erase some of these lines here. Uh, erase some of these lines. So uh, I'll turn this off for a second. So we're going to go back a full day and check what the previous day was like. So this day was a little bit less choppy, at least in terms of it didn't have that major jump uh, in the middle of the day. This has a jump, major jump in the middle of the day. Um, however, it wasn't it wasn't like blippy where it all of a sudden jumped. That was because there's a speaker talk and some data, economic data being released, and the market all of a sudden jumped. So there's not a there's not huge jumps, um, but this is a pretty pretty big jump, about one percent. So we can measure that jump. Um, if we'd like, uh, you can turn off this. Hold on a second here. Let me get this right. So we're going to measure the uh, jump here uh, for the day. So that move was about a 1.4% move uh, for the day. Um, and that happened within not very many minutes. So you can see uh, in terms of minutes, um, it was about mm, 80 minutes or so, right? Uh, and you can see that the measurement... Um, was about 50 something points. So, um, but you can see in 80 minutes, um, that's pretty much how many you can see I'm ticking, I'm moving it back and forth this way. And you can see the bars. So, the number of bars um, that gives us the number of minutes here. So, um, that's about 100 minutes right there. So, we can see that this was about 30 minutes. And that 30 minute drop was pretty significant, right? Uh, so again, um, you want to divide up your technical analysis into price, volume, or price and volume indicators, right? So, um, and then you could look at just uh, the raw price, um, of course, on the chart as well. Um, and you can even modify that um, by just changing the display type. So I, sometimes I use Heikinashi. So we can use Heikinashi again here. And you can see it again cleans up some of this downtrend here uh, to be more of a solid downtrend view visible. So next, let's talk about breakouts um, and different kinds of cycles. So you can see um, on this chart here that there was kind of a level of stabilization here. And typically what happens with a breakout is you have a level of stabilization and then you either have a breakout to the positive side or the negative side. Um, so if you use an indicator, you can start to see what the details are on that. So you can see that prior to this significant breakout um, to the downside, um, we did start to see a downward trend and it broke right when it hit below these two. So you can see that the actual 
technical loss was not at the way though, but it hit below that first, then went back up again, and then drops very significantly. So it actually took kind of a stage um, to get there. So let me mark off what happened here so we can have a horizontal line. So it looks like that that line is right here. Um, and the other way to do that is to, on a volume profile. So you can see on the volume profile, you have breakouts where there is major volume. Um, and those are harder to predict from just the volume profiles because you can see this shows that most of the volume was down towards the lower half. Um, and you can see that if you can use just volume profile, you can say that, well, it's probably going to break out to the lower side. So that's one possible way to do it. Um, the other way is to use the technical analysis. Now, let's see if volume gives us any predictions of what's going to happen. Now, this is harder because there's not really much volume pre-market, right? Until 930, basically there's no volume, but we can still zoom in here and kind of see uh, what's been going on, right? So we can kind of see once we break here. So it's a little hard to see because it all of a sudden floods there. So I'm going to pull it back here and you can see again on this that the volume was positive and it got to be negative and then it got to be more negative than this particular drop, right? So it kind of stayed within a range here. It had a low pretty, this went pretty high here, but it didn't go as high as low as this one went, right? So you can see that's about 150 and this is about 197. So it didn't quite make it on the higher side. Um, and then it kind of made another high and another high, but it was lower than that one each time. So the volume, even though there wasn't much volume prior to the open, does give us some picture. And you can see that the breakout did happen prior to nine, well, it happened right at 9.30, you can say, according to the volume, but the main the main breakout um, wasn't until later. So we had an early 9.30 kind of test of the volume um, showing that it was gonna go down. Um, and then some positive volume, but it was still pretty negative in here, but then a little bit of a blip and then down again on the negative volume, right? And then it came back up again on the volume and then it went down even more significantly so one of the questions is that why didn't it why didn't we get a reversal here um is one question because well the volume looks like it wasn't quite as bad as it was here but it's kind of a debate because when you take the length of this volume you kind of had some two positive volume candles in here um and so it's a little bit of a debate now, on the force index, it shows basically no debate on what happened, right? Except for maybe a little bit on this channel. There's kind of a slightly bit. It shows that the, definitely the force was here. It was starting to be, you can see a little sliver of negative negativities here. So right into the open, we could start to see some of that negative volume um, and price. So this is a force index. So this keeps track of both price and volume. So it's similar to money flow um, on a chart. So, but it's called the force index. Now, one of the things is that when you're thinking about entries and exits, um, you know, this is a per minute chart. Um, so we really could be exiting um, any time within a couple minutes um, or entering ex entry exit it could be happening really fast. Um, so we shouldn't expect, um, you know, to have very long moves in here. Now, you can see that the length of that move was approximately, we'd have to measure that here. So that's, um, let's measure this. So that is approximately 12 minutes, right? So we could say that this is a 12 minute move, that's another 12 minute move and so on. And we have these 12 minute cycles um, that we kind of see here. So uh, based on the previous cycles, we can kind of start to say how many minutes we're likely to be in on that move. Um, and that kind of works out. Um, you have to really um, look at different charts to see so you can kind of measure this one between hump and hump and this one here and then there's another one cycle there but or you can measure the whole cycle here to whole cycle here so i do use volume charts exclusively sometimes uh in lower per minute trading um you can see here that sometimes these peaks really show up uh, quite visibly and you can kind of see that this is definitely going to be a downtrend because we see that all the peaks were and then we kind of revert it over to maybe a possible positive trend here, but then we saw a negative, negative, and negative here. So, um, so, but basically all the day we were pretty much seeing these negative 
uh, candles. So in terms of support and resistance, classically on the uh, minute chart, um, you know, we basically have a smaller time frame and we measure it um, primarily using the indicator. So the indicators actually give us access to the higher time frames. Um, so we basically, if we draw support and resistance on here, um, we basically see it like this, right? So this is a support level and this is a resistance. Uh, so depending on the chart type really um, means what would happen in terms of entries and exits. Now, on Heike Nashi, you can see here um, that as soon as you get a lower lower or high on the wick, you could also exit there. Now, there's two strategies. You can see that the top of the candle is actually slightly higher there, so it's a little bit of a debate. Um, you can see higher here and then higher there, um, and then now the wick actually drops, so you can see a little bit of an exit pattern there so on the per minute chart um, it is quite fast paced um, in terms of trying to know about entries and exits so that's exit now entry you can say that whenever it hits the lowest point and then starts to go back up again um, you know you can I have to look for uh, kind of um, basically where your MACD is aligning as well. So it just happens that the MACD aligned here. So back in this point, back in here, we see a MACD getting kind of the lowest point here um, and then possibly get, being a, an entry uh, for a positive side. So we can see that right there, the signal line crossed um, with the uh, MACD. The MACD is now positive. So that shows a potential entry um, on this. Now it's usually about a candle delayed, um, so one minute delayed, um, depending on what kind of chart you're using. So I'm using an 8.16.8, um, which is pretty fast. Um, so sometimes it catches it within the same candle, but usually you have to wait one candle over and then you'll see for sure the crossing um, on the candle. So sometimes you have to make that decision um, right at the same candle. So that's a really tricky um, trade sometimes. Um, so most people agree that you should use at least two technical indicators to tell you when you should enter, enter the trade. Now, what I would in addition add to that is that one of the technical indicators should be a price and one of them should be volume. So you shouldn't just look at price. A lot of people just look at price uh, for their technical analysis and you can kind of get um, messed up because you really should look at both price and volume, even on the minute charts, um, really helps a lot. So in terms of entries and exits, um, there are many time times that are good to enter and exit. Um, so there's just different rules that you have to think about um, when trading. So basically you have a high, low, and a midpoint typically um, on your trades. So um, here's an example of where we have some high trades, some low trades, and kind of a midpoint in those trades. And what's going to happen during those kind of trades um, is different, right? So what you would do on a trade up here um, would be different than what you do on a midpoint trade and so on. So let's just go through those. So on a midpoint trade, we'd expect um, that there would be a lot of oscillations uh, right around the midpoint. Um, and you'd either be going up from that midpoint or down from that midpoint, right? Um, and you can kind of use the volume profile to give you some indications about where you're going to go from there. So you can see um, this line shows a little bit more um, weight towards the lower point. So typically, if you're taking a trade um, near the midpoint here, you'd think that it would be going down, um, at least based on the volume profile. So, and I actually did the exact opposite of that. So that's a breakout right there. Um, so that's one kind of trade. So now when you're trading on the higher points, um, typically you might expect a reversal, right? Um, back to the midpoint um, and then maybe even further down um, to the lower point. Um, but you shouldn't expect it to be too much lower than the midpoint um, during a trade like this. So um, now you also have an upper bounds uh, even beyond this here, um, which we got a line up here. We could potentially draw on this this here so uh, so there are several different ways to look at the trade so you could say that um, there is a lot of trading that has been up, done up above here as well so maybe that's one of the reasons why we saw um, you know there's not a whole lot of trading compared to all this trading that was done up above so there's a little bit way to measure this maybe the way we measured it wasn't quite correct we should have looked at the volume in this area as well 
So let's talk about the um, high point here since that's where the live trading is going on right now. So basically what happens here is that um, you have a level of resistance, right? And that level is right in here. Um, and it's from all of this consolidation right in here. Um, and we should expect that um, the other way to tell a level of resistance is look at the MACD or any of the other indicate, technical indicators. Um, like we can look at the volume and see what's going on here. So we can also see that the volume kind of gets to a certain point and then drops back down again. So basically we shouldn't expect the volume to get any higher than like right in there. Um, and if it does, it should bounce around. So basically what we would expect is that we're expecting a level of consolidation in here or a possible breakout. Um, and a breakout would be no consolidation and just a continuation. Now you can already see there was a red candle there. Um, and it's kind of um, going a little bit above uh, the level that we might expect right now. So this is considered a breakout. Um, so these do happen from time to time, um, but usually it stays within the channel um, that you'd expect uh, the trades to be in. Let's go back in time and look at the older trade here. So we can see that basically we already knew that this level was pretty much the level. Um, that you get the bounce at. So we already knew that as soon as it got down to this level that we were going to see some kind of bounce, um, either stabilization or a reversal back into the midpoint. And then we saw it go back to the midpoint again. So typically what's been happening here is it's been oscillating towards these midpoints um, and kind of going around. So right now you can see that this is potentially going to maybe turn into a short. It's kind of dropping. You can see the price um, hitting that technical indicator. Um, and dropping now that's exactly the opposite of what happened um here so it's what we'd expect we'd expect it to kind of go back to the midpoint um for the trading day um and then oscillate around so the nice part about trading is that you only really have three options either you're going to buy or you're going to sell or you're going to hold um so basically when we see a continuation like this um, typically it would have to flatten out um, here. So now it's starting to break the line, the trend line here. So it's maybe even going above uh, what we'd expect uh, for the MACD. So typically we use the indicators to help us understand whether we'd be in a buy mode or a sell mode. So when the indicator is usually positive, that means we want to be in a buy mode and then there's a sell uh, here. And then the hold kind of tells us if we want to stay on which side. So if we hold it in general a buy, then we're going to be in good shape here um, as we can see that we've got a lot of uh, tradition behind that. So that's one thing that's holding this from going up too much higher, but you can see it's kind of dropping back down again here. Um, now it hasn't really gotten into negative territory yet, um, but it's about to maybe cross it into some negative territory. So you can see that the force index is kind of getting to that point. Um, now you can also see on this that we have quite a ways to go down before we actually get into a negative trend still. So, and now we're kind of dropping um, here on the money flow. So you can see this further kind of dropping um, here and even hitting a kind of a lower point here. So the, for the first time now it's starting to get into negative money flow. Um, and you can see this kind of all evaporated the whole path here. So there's been a lot of volume. So the reason this drops so significantly here is you see these candles are volume. So money flow is pretty accurate because it keeps track of both price and volume. So if we didn't have this volume, then this money flow wouldn't have dropped so significantly. So it's kind of brings us all the way back to the midpoint, um, which is what this is sensing here. So this is sensing that we should go back um, to the midpoint here at this point. So one of the hard lessons to learn uh, when uh, trading these on the minute chart is that you really have to be careful uh, not to get involved in day trading if you, uh, the PDT rule. So you can't do any more than three day trades um, in a five day period or four day period. So you have to be careful about that. Um, and basically you want to trade, and we're looking at futures here. Now with futures, um, it's a little bit different um, on terms of the day trading requirements. So one interesting point to be made here, now we see this candle has kind of suddenly gone down pretty far. Um, now typically what happens on a reversal um, for these charts, right? So we, we kind of mapped out these horizontal ranges. So we saw that this was kind of an upper bounds um, based on this. Maybe we could do it a little bit lower kind of in this area. So there's kind of a uh, volume profile says it's right in there. So basically, once we got above there, we're basically in breakout territory. So we're expecting to see um, some kind of either flattening out, a reversal, or maybe a continuation, right? So for us to have a continuation, um, this MACD has to stay positive. 
um, and we have to stay um, above a certain level um, in order to make that stay positive. So uh, the way to really check this um, is to look at higher time frames. Um, and you can kind of see this is my five minute time frame um, here. So you can see that we've suddenly crossed uh, to be positive recently on the five minute time frame. Now that doesn't really show up so much here. I mean, we do see the positivity on the MACD. Um, you know, we are positive here, but um, it didn't show up um, as clearly as on the five minute time frame. So the larger the time frame, typically the more accurate it is for what the trend is. So these trends are kind of like all micro trends um, within whatever the main time frame is. So if you want to know what the bigger trend is, you have to zoom out on the time frame. Um, but we're mainly talking about the one minute time frame for trading right now. So it is really, really important to find the trends. Um, and you know, basically there's two types of trends that you can basically see. Now, it's hard to do this, um, but it's worth the time uh, to draw some lines on your technical indicators. And you can see that that trend is kind of reversal. Now, it's considered a reversal um, it, it, if, if, the, if the indicator is showing one direction and the price is showing the other direction, right? So we can see that the price was still kind of going down here, but we see a slowing of how fast it was going down. Um, and then finally it broke, excuse me, it broke into a positive trend here. So right in here basically is where we start to see the positivity. Um, so the thing that I'm still not super good at yet is kind of deciding uh, what constitutes a flattening out um, versus just a reversal. So you have to kind of draw a line here. Um, and when you get the angle correct on this, anything above one side of this angle or another will determine. So if you're to the right of this, typically you're going to be flattening out. If you're to the left of this, then it means you're actually in a negative, a positive trend. So even though you're on, so because this is significantly closer to, uh, it's significantly on this side of the line, that was actually a positive trend right in here. So you can see um, in this chart here, there's a little bit of a positive trend right here. And that's because this angle of this is basically saying a leveling out, right? So once you get, and you can draw it kind of halfway in between, right? So halfway in between this kind of tells us, so this was definitely a downtrend um, here. Um, and, but once you get the uptrend, you have to have a certain, it's basically 45 degree angle um, from this. So, um, and it's hard to get that 45 degree angle because it depends on units that are not consistent. So basically you have a time unit on the X axis and then you have a price unit. Um, 45 degrees doesn't really quite make sense on that kind of thing because it's not um, equivalent. So, but uh, when you get, when you get um, a basic concept of what 45 degrees is for the time frame, um, you can kind of uh, do this with the downtrend and the uptrend. So I did it kind of halfway. So anything above this, this means that it's kind of starting to be a little bit more of a negative trend, right? So this is all negative trend in here. Um, but another way to do that is with the signal line. So a lot of people just use the signal line uh, and the MACD line and do that. But you can also do it kind of with the drawing of a line as well. So we have a pretty sizable breakout um, outside of that range. So basically what we would expect um, for the nighttime. So this is not very big moves that we're looking at right now. So it's kind of uh, interesting to look at the nighttime uh, views, although it's maybe uh, a little bit slower in terms of the actual moves. Um, it is interesting to see uh, when you zoom in, you can kind of start to see some of these uh, trends, but typically it will always stay in a certain range uh, at nighttime. It won't oscillate too much more than, you know, this is saying 0.01% or 0% right now. So it's not even really even moving uh, much at all, even though you see slight ticks on the market here. So let's go back and look at the previous day and we can see that there's, this is more of a daytime moves. So we see more of a typical trend here between here and here. Um, for the moves for the day with a little bit of a bias towards the lower half of that, right? So you can see that the general uh, volume was in the lower half. 